Hello, this is Herman Osterwick, and in this presentation we're going to talk about HL7 version 2.x parsing, editing, and validation tool. When I talk about HL7 version 2.x, that means any of the HL7 version 2 will be covered in this particular presentation. So whether it's version 2.1, 2.3, 5, 6, 7, whatever version you have, we'll talk about the parsing, editing, and validation tools. So let me first give you a little bit of an introduction. Why do we want to do this parsing, validation, and editing? And then I'll, I'll show you a, a little snapshot of what the different tools that I use in our training classes and in our practice, um, the, the tools that we will use and I find the most useful. And so the first one will be the uh, Smart HL7 Viewer, and then the second one will be OT Send, and then we're going to talk about the Messaging Workbench. So first a little bit about why is it that we need to learn about parsing, editing and conformance tools. And this conformance will then include the validation. And the, the first reason is um, because of troubleshooting. Uh, we want to find a problem. Let's say a particular message is sent, and it's a seven transaction is sent, for example, for a new order to a modality works provider, for example, in the radiology department or cardiology department. And when the uh, technologist or the, uh, let's say, CT machine pulls up the work list and expects to see the patient ID as part of the patient demographics and it's not present, we might want to go back to the it's a seven order and find out where is this patient ID? Is it uh, available at all? Um, or what location is it? So to find the problem in the messages is, is the first reason why we want to do the parsing. We want to bring up an image. Uh, it's a seven transaction and look what, what is going on. Then second, editing. Now, if you have a problem that occurs frequently, you don't want to keep on editing. But in case you find what you think is the problem, you might want to edit and change, for example, the patient ID to another location and then try again whether the transaction will go through and will give the required result. So that's a one-time fix to really make sure that we, what we found validates what I know what our suspicion is about a particular problem. Another reason why we want to uh, parsing editing is the remapping. So we want to fix the problem permanently. Uh, so some of the uh, tools might allow you to do that. Although most of the time you will find that in interface engine or the modality workers provider, broker or connectivity manager, whatever the name is, will allow you to do remapping for example, again, if we take this example of the patient ID, if it happens to be in the wrong location, we, we can then map it to the correct location. So, for example, instead of PIT3, the internal to the external, maybe PIT4. And then we want to, uh, to do testing. Let's say an, uh, an upgrade is planned for the radiology information system or the scheduling software as part of the EMR, for example. And a new upgrade is planned and, and you want to make sure that, that everything still works. So you want to uh, then, in this case, uh, create some HR7 messages, look at it, make sure that everything is okay, and then do testing and then, for example, send the messages to the uh, scheduler and then expect the correct uh, scheduling information to come up on your modality, for example. Another important uh, reason for using these tools is the validation. There is a capability and the, the third tool that we're going to talk about, the messaging workbench, by specifying a profile. And a profile can be used to test messages that are created. So, for example, if you're an organization, you might want to set up a conformance profile. And then if any time a particular vendor comes in with an upgrade or even with the new vendors, you might want to run their particular transactions against your conformance performance validation to make sure that they comply so that we minimize the potentially impact of, of the connectivity and the upgrades. And then last but not least, um, the tools are also very useful for simulation. I'll show you a simulator for a CPOE, which is a centralized physician ordering entry system, and a simulator for a for results management system, so that allows you to simulate creating an HL7 transaction and by which you can, you know, educate yourself, learn about the structure of these messages, and of course you can use it in training for you or other students, and then also to validate the different messages. So let's uh, jump in right uh, to the first tool, and that's called Smart HL7. It's a um, tool that is um, relatively limited, but 
kind of nice. Uh, I like the user interface. It's uh, so it can be used for parsing, so for taking the messages apart, and then also then troubleshooting because you can find out uh, exactly what is the contents of that uh, particular 877 transaction. And as I, I mentioned, it's, it's a free uh, product. You uh, uh, can download it and use it. And the nice thing is that it is also no executable so you can just start it up you don't really have to to run an executable but uh, sometimes helps uh, if some of you use it in a computer that is locked down by your IT department for example so uh, it will give you the um, the link where you can download it and then you can try it after you look at this video or you're doing this this video you can try it uh, as we go so let's now we'll pull up the first parser and then uh, we'll tell you a little bit about how this works so when you start the it's my data have a message viewer you will see the screen as follows and on the top you see a load feature and we have a copy and a paste so basically we can load an existing message file or we can copy the contents of the message from a notepad for example and paste it in this top window so to load a, a message in the uh, in this top window we uh, can basically uh, copy and paste it for notepad so if we open notepad and uh, uh, have a particular file. In this case, um, I have a, uh, a file that uh, is called uh, ultrasound report. I open it up. I can do a control A, a that selects it. And uh, basically, I can go to this window and do paste. And uh, we have the message here. So you basically can copy and paste from any from PDF documents, uh, Word documents. Uh, make sure you don't have any of the control characters, and that's why we go for Notepad first. Uh, so in this case, it's a um, um, an, uh, report, and we'll see here uh, the uh, OBR, and then uh, the OBX where we have the uh, uh, observation values. So this will be a report identifier, and then apparently all the text in this case is sent in NTE's notes sent signature lights for example and uh, you're attending radiologist so it's relatively easy to go through it and the observation value itself is in this case um, uh, 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 in the OBX and so uh, the different values uh, can really uh, be displayed right here so there was an ultrasound carotid uh, duplex doppler and this case is a little bit unusual example where everything is in a single OBX line. In many cases, this is actually uh, split up in, in multiple um, OBXs. Um, notice, interestingly enough, that this is what we call an FT or formatted text. So it gives you all the formatting information, for example, a break uh, for, for the new lines. So that's how we uh, can parse messages either through notepad and um, with the copy paste or we load directly the file in this uh, particular tool very handy um, but it's somewhat limited because the best you can do is go through it uh, do some troubleshooting but you don't have any editing or sending capability and that's what we're gonna um, look at the next tool which is called the OT send and uh, uh, so let's talk a little bit about that and I'll show you how that works so OT Send does a couple of things. Uh, not only does it do the parsing, but it also has a simple validation capability. It makes sure that the um, segments are present and the appropriate delimiters. And um, in addition, it also is a message sender. That means that it, it allows the uh, uh, message that you create or is a sim part of a simulator or that you load it to be sent to a, to a particular destination. Then it also is a simulator because it has CPOE functionality, meaning uh, centralized physician order entry. So you basically can simulate placing an order using the patient information on a particular order and uh, specify some of the basic information such as a physician name and uh, schedule that and then um, create the particular order. And that's then you can subsequently send on to a destination. And also it allows you to create a result, a, um, a diagnostic report uh, for testing purposes. So it's a commercial product that is provided by OTEC uh, and you can download a, a free evaluation copy. So uh, for the purpose of this exercise, you can just go to the link on their website and um, go for it and, and, and um, use it to, to do the simple validation and, and potentially send editing and potentially send the messages. So now let's look at the um, uh, OT send and um, show you how it works. 
So after you install the uh, OTSend, you would see uh, the screen as follows. Uh, on the top, you have a current message structure. And uh, we do the same thing as we did with the other parts. So we can use a loader file, or you actually can also cut and paste. But let's do, for now, um, a loader file. So we'll open, and uh, let's take a, um, a uh, not the imaging order, but maybe a, a, a medication order, for example. So here's a medication order. Um, we see the medication on the right side, um, and on the top we see the current message structure, and here uh, it will actually give you the message structure of this particular message, which is an order message, or ORM, um, as it is defined by the HL7 standard. And then again we can go, for example, we want to find out the uh, patient ID, we just click on the left and uh, find out the patient ID here, or we can go on the right side, uh, for example, we can go to the name, and the name, it's a little bit hard to see, but basically this is highlighted right here on the left side. So again, parsing very convenient. And now the nice thing is that, uh, let's say my patient uh, name is, uh, is wrong and I want to use, do some testing. So I can go to the right and I can actually uh, uh, change this. And for example, into uh, John. And uh, I can just then do a file and save or save as, and then we can do some testing again. So very convenient. By the way, there's also a simple validation. For example, if I would uh, uh, create an invalid message by in inserting an, a return here, there's a, an error that is being displayed that says bad segment name, uh, so uh, or missing segment. So it will do some basic um, validation as well. So if I go back, then it will say back the message is valid. So basic parsing, uh, updating, editing, uh, pretty cool. Uh, you can go through the message and, and look at all the different information. The, and um, in the, the next video, we're going to talk a little bit about um, how to send the message uh, and also to simulate uh, uh, orders and results. And then also talk about the other uh, tool is called the messaging wheelpads.